Imagine, if you will, a young person with dreams bigger than themselves, standing on the precipice of making a life-altering decision. This person, let's call them Alex, had faced one setback after another. They had a vision, a dream they were tirelessly working towards. But life, as it often does, threw curveball after curveball their way. Just when Alex thought they had a clear path forward, another obstacle emerged, seemingly more insurmountable than the last. Now most people might think this is where Alex's story ends, to coming to the pressure, giving up on their dream. But what if I told you it was just the beginning? What if I told you that despite the setbacks, the heartaches, and the countless times Alex was knocked down, they chose to press on? You see, Alex understood something very crucial about life. It's not the absence of obstacles that defines our path, but our response to them. This brings us to the heart of our discussion today, the sheer unyielding power of perseverance. Life, my friends, is a series of challenges, obstacles, and setbacks. It's not a question of if they will come, but when they do, how will you respond? Will you let them define you, or will you, like Alex, choose to press on? Think back to a moment in your own life when you were faced with a challenge that seemed insurmountable. Remember the feelings of despair, the moments of doubt. What did you do? Did you give up, or did you find within yourself the strength to press on? The truth is, each one of us has an Alex within us. Each one of us has faced moments where the easier choice would have been to give up. Yet here we are, because you chose to press on, to face your obstacles head on. But how do we cultivate this resilience, this ability to keep moving forward, no matter what life throws our way? Today, I want to share with you the principles that not only helped Alex, but have helped countless individuals around the world overcome their obstacles and achieve their dreams. These are the principles that can turn your biggest challenges into your greatest victories. And I ask you to keep an open mind, reflect on your own challenges, your own moments of doubt, and consider how applying these principles can change not just your approach to obstacles, but your entire life's trajectory. Not just as a speaker in an audience, but as fellow travelers on life's winding path, supporting and uplifting each other every step of the way, together we'll uncover the secrets to turning our trials into triumphs, and our hardships into stepping stones for success. Perseverance, a word we often hear but don't fully grasp its power, until we're in the thick of our battles, trying to reach our goals. Think of perseverance as the inner flame that keeps burning even when the night is at its darkest. It's what makes the difference between dreams realized and dreams deferred. Let's talk about people who've embodied perseverance, those who've etched their names in the annals of history not because they never face challenges, but because they refuse to be defined by them. Consider Thomas Edison, who faced 10,000 failures before inventing the light bulb. Each failure brought him closer to success because he never saw these setbacks as reasons to give up, but as steps on the path to innovation. Or think of Abraham Lincoln, who faced defeat after defeat in his political life, only to become one of the most revered presidents of the United States. His story teaches us that failure is not the end, but an opportunity to grow stronger and more resilient. The psychological impact of choosing to move forward in the face of adversity is profound. When you decide to keep going, you're not just pushing past external obstacles, you're battling the internal naysayers telling you it's impossible. The moment you decide not to give up, you shift your mindset from one of defeat to one of potential impossibilities. This shift doesn't just help you overcome the current challenge, it transforms how you approach life's inevitable hurdles. Now pause for a moment and ask yourself, what could I achieve if I decided never to give up? Imagine the possibilities that could unfold before you if you chose to persevere, to keep that inner flame burning brightly, no matter how strong the winds of adversity blow. Perseverance is not about blindly pushing forward. It's about recognizing when to pivot, when to rest, and when to seek guidance. It's about learning from each setback and using that knowledge to build a stronger foundation for your dreams. So, as we navigate the complexities of our personal and professional lives, remember the power of perseverance. Remember that the difference between success and failure often comes down to who decides to keep going, who chooses to ignite their inner flame of perseverance, even when the odds seem stacked against them. Challenge yourselves to embody perseverance in our daily lives. Be the person who looks at challenges as opportunities, who sees failures as lessons, and who knows that the only true defeat comes from giving up. Commit to never giving up on our dreams, 
to pushing through the barriers, and to achieving the greatness we're all capable of. Remember, the only limit to what we can achieve lies in our willingness to persevere, to keep going no matter what happens in our journey. It's natural to encounter obstacles. These are not barriers designed to stop us, but rather stepping stones to greater success. Every hurdle we face is an opportunity in disguise, waiting to be uncovered. This perspective shift is crucial for transforming our challenges into our victories. Think about the common hurdles we face. Personal doubt, whispers in our ear telling us we're not good enough, or that our dreams are too far-fetched. External criticism, often from those we respect or care about, can dampen our spirit and derail our progress. But unforeseen circumstances, like a sudden job loss or a global event, can throw our plans into disarray. These challenges, while daunting, are not the end of our story, but the beginning of a new chapter. Why then do we turn these obstacles into opportunities? The first step is to embrace them. Instead of asking why me, we should ask what can this teach me? This simple question shifts our mindset from one of victimhood to one of growth and resilience. When faced with personal doubt, the strategy is to build self-efficacy. Set small, achievable goals for yourself. Each time you accomplish one, you chip away at the wall of doubt, brick by brick. Celebrate these victories, no matter how small they are. They are proof of your capability and progress. Dealing with external criticism requires a balance of openness and self-assurance. Listen to what others have to say, but filter it through your own judgment. Constructive criticism can be a valuable tool for growth, but it's important to remain steadfast in your vision. Remember, the most successful people in history were often misunderstood or underestimated by their contemporaries. As for unforeseen circumstances, flexibility is key. Adapt your plans, but keep your eyes on the ultimate goal. Every setback is a lesson in disguise, teaching us to be more resilient, resourceful, and adaptable. Embrace change as an inevitable part of growth. Now consider this thought-provoking question. How can your biggest challenge today become your biggest victory tomorrow? Imagine looking back a year from now, having turned today's obstacle into a stepping stone for your success. What steps did you take? How did you transform this challenge into an opportunity? Remember, the size of your success is determined by the size of your belief. See obstacles not as dead ends, but as detours on the road to success. Embrace each challenge as an opportunity to grow stronger, wiser, and more resilient. Approach our obstacles with a new perspective. See them as the gifts that they are, opportunities to prove our mettle, to refine our strategies, and to come out on the other side not just as survivors, but as victors. The path to success is paved with obstacles, but with perseverance, resilience, and a shift in perspective, there's no limit to what we can achieve. The role of a positive mindset cannot be overstated. It's the beacon that guides us through the stormiest of seas, the light that illuminates our darkest moments. The importance of maintaining a positive outlook in the face of difficulty is akin to keeping our ship steady and on course, no matter how violent the waves may be. Cultivating positivity is not merely about seeing the glass as half full. It's about understanding that even the empty half is an opportunity to fill it with something new and potentially better. So, how do we foster this mindset? Let's start with gratitude practices. Begin each day by reflecting on what you are thankful for. It could be as simple as a sunny day, a good cup of coffee, or the smile of a loved one. This practice shifts our focus from what we lack to what we possess, enriching our lives with a sense of abundance. Positive affirmations are another powerful tool. Statements like, I am capable, I am resilient, and I am worthy of success, can transform our self-perception and our reality. By affirming our value and our potential, we set the foundation for incredible growth and achievement. Surrounding ourselves with positive influences is crucial. You become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Choose to be around those who uplift you, who see the greatness within you even when you might not see it yourself. These individuals not only inspire us but also challenge us to be our best selves. Now let's turn our attention to stories of transformation, of individuals who, by changing their attitudes, change their circumstances. Consider the story of a young artist who faced rejection after rejection. Each no could have been a reason to give up, but instead, she chose to see each rejection as a sign that she was one step closer to a yes. Today, her art is celebrated worldwide, 
a testament to the power of a positive mindset. Or think about the entrepreneur who, after a failed business venture, decided to view the failure not as a setback, but as a learning opportunity. This shift in perspective led him to start a new venture, applying the lessons he learned from his failure. His company is now thriving, proof that a positive attitude can turn even the bitterest defeat into a sweet victory. So, what negative views do you hold that could be transformed into positive action? Imagine the possibilities that could unfold if you decided to view every challenge as an opportunity to learn. Consider how your life might change if you replace self-doubt with self-belief. The power of a positive mindset is not just about feeling good. It's about creating a reality that reflects our highest aspirations. It's about turning our cans into cans and our dreams into plans. By choosing positivity, we not only enhance our own lives but also inspire those around us to do the same. Commit to fostering a positive mindset. Embrace gratitude, affirm your worth, surround yourself with positivity, and transform your challenges into opportunities. Remember, the only limits that truly exist are those we place upon ourselves. With a positive mindset, there are no limits to what we can achieve. Resilience is the very backbone of perseverance, the invisible force that enables us to keep moving forward no matter what challenges or setbacks we encounter. It's the grit and determination that turn adversity into advantage, the quiet strength that transforms defeat into victory. Building resilience isn't just about bouncing back, it's about bouncing forward. It's about using every experience, good or bad, as a stepping stone towards your goals. One of the most powerful techniques for building resilience is embracing failure as a learning opportunity. Each time we stumble, we're presented with a unique chance to gather insights, to refine our strategies, and to come back stronger. Failure isn't the opposite of success. It's part of the success journey. Setting and adjusting goals is another crucial aspect of developing resilience. Goals give us direction. But the ability to adapt and modify those goals in response to changing circumstances is what keeps us on the path to achievement. Seeking support from mentors and peers is equally important. No one achieves greatness in isolation. The guidance, encouragement, and wisdom of those who have walked the path before us can be a tremendous source of strength and resilience. Similarly, the support of our peers who are journeying alongside us provides comfort and camaraderie that can lighten even the heaviest of loads. Reflect on your own experiences where resilience led to unexpected outcomes. Think about a time when you were faced with a challenge that seemed insurmountable, yet you persevered. What did you learn? How did that experience change your approach to future challenges? Remember, building resilience is not a one-time task. It's a continuous process of growth and learning. It requires us to face our fears, to step out of our comfort zones, and to embrace the unknown with open arms. Commit to building your resilience every day. View every challenge as an opportunity to learn and grow, to set and adjust your goals as needed, and to seek and offer support to those around you. Resilience is not just about surviving, it's about living our lives with purpose, passion, and perseverance, no matter what comes our way. Together, let's embrace the journey of building resilience, knowing that with each step we take, we're not just moving closer to our goals, we're also becoming stronger, wiser, and more capable of facing whatever the future holds. Let's remind ourselves that the true measure of our success is not just in the achievements we accumulate, but in the obstacles we overcome and the resilience we build along the way. When faced with adversity, the natural response for many of us is to freeze, to become overwhelmed by the magnitude of the challenge at hand. However, the key to moving forward, to transforming these obstacles into stepping stones, lies in taking action but not just any action. Deliberate, purposeful, and consistent action. The starting point for any journey of transformation begins with setting clear, measurable goals. It's like plotting a course on a map. You need to know your destination before you can chart the best route to get there. Your goals should be specific enough to provide direction, yet flexible enough to allow for the unexpected twists and turns that life inevitably throws our way. Once you have these goals in place, the next step is to break them down into actionable steps. This is where many of us falter, not because we lack the desire or the determination, but because the gap between where we are and where we want to be seems insurmountably wide. However, when we break down our goals into smaller manageable tasks, what once seemed impossible becomes achievable. Each task completed is a small victory, 
a step closer to our ultimate goal. The commitment to taking at least one small step each day towards your larger goal is about building momentum, one day at a time. Even on days when progress seems slow or non-existent, the act of moving forward, however slight, keeps the flame of progress alight. It's the compound effect in action. Small daily actions lead to significant long-term results. So, I pose to you a thought-provoking question. What's one step you can take today that you've been putting off? Is it making that phone call you've been dreading? Is it starting on the project you've been procrastinating on? Whatever it is, commit to taking that step today, not tomorrow, not next week, but today. It's remarkable how taking even the smallest action can begin to shift our mindset from one of paralysis to one of empowerment. In taking action, it's also important to anticipate setbacks. They are not signs of failure, but rather part of the process of achievement. When faced with a setback, take a moment to reassess, adjust your plan if necessary, and then press on with renewed determination. Remember, the journey towards any worthwhile goal is rarely a straight line. It's full of detours, roadblocks, and unexpected challenges. However, it's not the presence of these obstacles that determines our success, but our response to them. So, let's not just dream about the lives we want to lead. Let's take the actions necessary to make those dreams a reality. Let's set our goals, break them down into actionable steps, and commit to taking daily action towards achieving them. Let's build the resilience to bounce back from setbacks and the flexibility to adjust our plans as needed. Remember, every great achievement begins with the decision to try. To move forward in the face of adversity is to embrace the possibility of what could be rather than being constrained by what is. It's to understand that the power to change our circumstances lies not in waiting for the perfect moment, but in taking action, however small, at every opportunity. Take a moment to reflect on the journey we've embarked upon today. We've acknowledged the inevitability of obstacles in our path, the transformative power of a positive mindset, the essential process of building resilience, and the undeniable importance of taking action. Consider the story of a small seed that finds itself buried deep under the soil. To the seed, the weight of the earth above might seem like an insurmountable obstacle. Driven by an innate desire to reach the sunlight, this tiny seed doesn't possess the strength to move the earth in one grand gesture. Instead, it grows bit by bit, day by day, facing resistance, breaking through barriers, and overcoming challenges, until one day, it breaks through the surface into the sunlight. The seed, once buried and seemingly defeated by its circumstances, transforms into a strong, resilient tree, standing tall and proud. This story is a metaphor for our own lives. Like the seed, we too face obstacles that seem to bury us, challenges that appear to block our path to the sunlight. But it is in these moments that our true strength is forged. By maintaining a positive mindset, by building our resilience, and by taking action, no matter how small, we can overcome the barriers that stand in our way. So, I encourage you to apply these principles to your own life. Start with a single step, one small action towards your goal. Embrace the challenges as opportunities to learn and grow. Surround yourself with positivity. Seek out mentors and peers who uplift you. And remember, every day is a chance to move closer to your dream. As we part ways, I leave you with one final thought-provoking question. Imagine where you could be a year from now if you refuse to let challenges stop you. What does that future look like? Picture it, believe in it, and then take the steps to make it a reality. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Let that step be your commitment today to move forward, to grow, and to achieve the success you've always dreamed of. The path may not be easy, but the destination is worth every challenge, every setback, and every moment of doubt. As you go forward, carry with you the knowledge that within you lies the strength, the resilience, and the power to change your life. The only question that remains is, what will you do with that power? Everything in life and business is about relationships. Your ability to form the right relationships with the right people at every stage of your life and career will be the critical determinant of your success and achievement. The more people you know and who know you in a positive way, the more successful you will be at anything you attempt to accomplish. For goals of any kind, you will need the help of many people. Who are they? You need to develop a strategy to work effectively with each group. Start with your business. Make a list of everyone who works inside and outside of your business. 
your boss, your colleagues, your coworkers, subordinates, and especially your customers, suppliers, and vendors. Which of these people have a greater ability to help you or hurt you in the achievement of your business or career goals? Then, point out that everyone is in the business of customer service, no matter what they call it or what they do. A customer can be defined as anyone upon whom you depend for success and advancement in your job or business. A customer can also be defined as anyone who depends on you in any way. For example, your boss is your primary customer at work. Your ability to satisfy your boss will have more of an impact on your future, your income and your career than any other single action you take. If you displease everyone else but your boss is delighted with you, you'll be safe and secure in your job. If you please everyone inside and outside your company but your boss is unhappy with you, that problem alone can short-circuit your future. One of the best strategies you can use is to make a list of everything that you believe you have been hired to do. Then, take this list to your boss and ask your boss to organize this list in order of his or her priority. What is most important to your boss? What is second most important? What is third most important? And so on. From that moment onward, Discipline yourself to work on your boss's top task all day long. This will do more to help you in your career than any other single decision you make. 86% of the senior executives selected two qualities as being more important for career success and advancement than any others. First, the ability to set priorities to separate the relevant from the irrelevant. Second, it was the ability to get the job done fast, to execute quickly. There is nothing that will help you more in your career than to get the reputation for being the kind person who gets the most important jobs done quickly and well. But the sad thing is that if you do an unimportant job very well, this could actually hurt your career and even threaten your job. Be sure that what you're doing today is still your boss's top priority, then make a game of doing it fast. Your co-workers who also depend on your work are your customers as well. Go to each one of them and ask if there is anything that you can do to help them. The fact is that people think about themselves and their own job all day long. You should look for every opportunity in your work to help people and to do nice things for others. The more the people next to you, above you, and below you like you and support you, the more you'll get paid, and the faster you'll be promoted. Look for ways to be a valuable resource to the people around you, and they will automatically look for ways to help you and support you when you most need it. Perhaps the most important quality you can develop for long-term success in your business is that of being a good team player. To be a good team player, always come prepared to every meeting, sit opposite and in direct eye contact with the person who's running the meeting, speak early and ask questions, volunteer for assignments, and when you offer to do something, do it quickly and well, so that it is clear who the go-to person is in the company. As a result, you will be given more and bigger jobs, with both the authority and the rewards that go with those jobs. Take time to get to know your subordinates and the people who are below you on the corporate ladder. Offer to help them if you can. Be especially kind and courteous with them. Go out of your way to compliment them and to recognize them for their work. You will be amazed at the difference this makes in your career. In every organization, the person who knows the most people is usually the person who, like cream, rises to the top. Outside of your business, you should get involved with your industry and your industry associations. Look at the business organizations in your community. Once you've decided that it would be useful for you to be a member of one of these organizations, join up and begin attending every meeting. Here's the best strategy of all for networking. Select an important committee within the organization and volunteer to work on that committee. Once you join the committee, volunteer for assignments. Even though this work is unpaid, these activities give you an opportunity to work with and perform before other key people who can help you in your career sometime down the road. The more people that you know and work with in your industry, the more doors of opportunity there are that will open for you when the time is right. As you read your local newspapers, make a list of the top people in your community. As you gather these names, write a letter to each of them. Send something that is non-business related, such as a copy of a small book, a poem, a newspaper clipping, or anything that might be of interest to them based on what you've read about them in the papers. Each time that you see a reason to communicate with that person, Drop them a note. Often, it won't get through or make direct contact, but continue to sow seeds, and sooner or later, what goes around comes around. Eventually, you will end up meeting a key person socially or in business, and they will remember that you dropped them a letter a week, a month, or even a year ago. No effort that you make to expand your contacts will ever be completely lost. Some will yield results immediately, 
Some will not yield results for many months or even years. You must be prepared to be patient. Make it a point to associate with the kind of people that you like, admire, respect, and want to be like. Sometime in the future, the choice of a positive goal-oriented reference group can do more to supercharge your career than any other decision you make. At every turning point in your life, there is usually someone standing there guiding you in one direction or another, opening or closing the door for you, or helping you in some way. If you're really serious about being the best and moving to the top of your field, you cannot afford to spend much of your time with people who are going nowhere in their lives, no matter how nice they are. You must set high standards for your friends and associates and refuse to compromise. Your choice of the people you associate with will have more of an impact on what you become than any other single factor. The third category of people whose help and cooperation you will require are your family and friends. It is absolutely vital that you invest all the time and emotion necessary to build and maintain a high-quality home life or relationship. Life problems at home distract your attention and drain your energy. They can often sabotage your career. Throughout your career, you will be required to go to what are called deliberate extremes. You will have to work long hours and often many days without breaks or vacations in order to take advantage of an opportunity or to complete a project. Be sure that you discuss these deliberate extremes in advance with the members of your family so that they understand what is happening and why you are doing it. Always treat people with kindness, courtesy, and compassion. Above all, the simplest strategy is to treat everyone you meet at home or at work like a million-dollar customer. Treat the other person as though he or she is the most important person in the world. Treat them as though they were capable of buying a million dollars worth of your product or service. Every day, in every way, look for ways to lighten the load and help other people to do their jobs and live their lives more easily. Now, here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. Make a list of the most important people in your work and business life. Develop a plan to help each person in some way. Make a list of the most important people in your personal life. Determine the kind of relationship you want to have with them and what you will have to do to achieve it. Identify the groups and organizations in your community and your field that it would be helpful for you to join. Go in today and arrange to attend the next meeting. Well, there's been a lot of recent research on the qualities of successful entrepreneurs. The primary quality, according to 85% of successful entrepreneurs, is hard work. They attribute their success to their dedication and effort. The second quality is self-discipline as successful entrepreneurs are able to focus and discipline themselves to tackle their most important tasks consistently. The third quality is persistence, which involves overcoming obstacles, setbacks, and failures. If we consider these three qualities collectively, they account for about 90% of success. Hard work, self-discipline, and persistence are the cornerstones of achievement in entrepreneurship. Now, the starting point for success is to plan each day in writing. Without a written plan, navigating through tasks becomes chaotic, akin to driving on a slippery road. Additionally, it's important to recognize that there are only three key activities each day that contribute to 90% of your value. We call these the big three. Sometimes I teach it as the law of three. There are three activities that account for 90% of everything you do. Everything else accounts for 10% or less. So, you have to ask yourself, what are the three most important things that I do in my work? Then, you have to discipline yourself to start with the most important task and work on it until it is complete. It's a very simple principle, but it is the beginning, middle, and end of success. Decide on your most important task, begin immediately, and work on that task with self-discipline until it is 100% complete. In life, it's a very simple principle. But all success comes from completing tasks, not just working at them. It is only when you complete tasks that you are successful. So, then you have to ask, what are the most important tasks that I should complete every day? Yes, and the rule is, do not check your email before 11 a.m. in the morning. Because if you check your email, and then it will be 5 or 6 more in the evening, and you're still checking your email. So, Email should be used very carefully because email is a great danger for distraction, and distraction is the opposite of discipline. So, the way that you control electronic interruptions is you turn them off, your computer, turn them all off, so that you can work on those activities that generate the most revenue.
The most important key to success is to start and complete one important task first thing in the morning. If you eat the frog, if you try to do many things, you end up doing nothing. So, you make a list of all your work before you begin, and then you ask if I could only do one thing on this list, which activity is the most important? And then, you do that activity, and only that until it's complete. If you start every day by completing a task, you will double and triple your productivity. Well that brings us back to our discussion about goal setting. You have to have written goals as well for your life. A recent study comparing rich people and poor people found that 85% of rich people have one big goal that they work on all the time. Only 3% of poor people have goals. So, you have to decide what your biggest goal is. In business, usually, your biggest goal is personal or business income. If that is your biggest goal, then it's clear. Then you say, what are the activities that I do to generate income? And of all of those, right now, which is the most important for generating income? So, entrepreneurs always think in terms of revenue generation and what we call value creation. There's another interesting study that has just come out, a very good study. It says that there are three rules for success in business. Number one, always choose higher quality rather than lower cost. Most companies think the way to sell more is to lower the price, but the true reason for success, and there's years of research on this, is to improve the quality of your product. The second rule is to focus on revenue generation rather than on the costs of your business, rather than on the price that things cost. Focus on revenue generation. And rule number three is that there are no other rules. Two rules. Focus on quality and focus on revenues. You improve the quality of your product. There was a study of the 500 fastest growing companies in the world that came out last year. And they found the number one place where they invested was improving the quality of the product. If you had a certain amount of money to invest in your business, it was not on advertising or machinery or computers, but improving the quality. Well, in my estimation, if I am successful, people will listen to me and take actions that are different from before, and they will get better results. So therefore, my job is to study and research, so that I can give people the best ideas that they can use immediately to get better results. And so, I continue to research on every subject, and sometimes I find a new idea that someone has learned that's better than an old idea, so I will change that. The reason people come to a seminar, you always say that a product has two goals. It has a problem to solve or a job to do. So, people hire a speaker to do a job. In other words, like you hire a carpenter or a cleaner or a painter to do a job. Alright? They hire the speaker, or they read the book, or they listen to the audio because they want it to do a job and they're hiring the speaker or audio or book to do a job. So, the question you ask is, what job does this person want me to do for them? Now, it may be entertainment, like going to a movie, maybe socializing, like going to a restaurant. Okay, but what is it? What is the job? And you say, well, people want to increase their sales and profitability in their business. That's very simple. So then, my job is to help them increase their sales and profitability immediately as a result of my seminar. So, some people will do a seminar, and they will spend the entire time telling stories about themselves. Well, that does not do the job. That does not help people increase their sales and profitability. It may be entertaining, but it does not fulfill the commitment. It does not do the job. So, the other question is, what is the problem to be solved? And in all businesses, if we're talking about businesses, the one major problem is low sales. Sales are too low. Alright? So, what is the solution to low sales? The solution is high sales. So therefore the problem to be solved is to help people operate their business to increase their sales, or to increase their profitability. The whole purpose of a business mission, purpose, goal, strategy, in my estimation, is to help people. It's to help people achieve something, or accomplish something, that they could not achieve or accomplish without your help. So, that's the why. And for me, the why is very simple. When I was young, I was poor, and I had no education and no money. And then, I discovered continuous learning, personal development. I found you can learn anything that you need to learn to be successful in that area. You could learn to do brain surgery if that was important to you. You could learn to repair an expensive automobile. You could learn to prepare a dish in the kitchen. You can learn anything. You can learn all business skills. You can learn all sales skills. When I discovered this, I still remember, I couldn't believe it because it meant that my potential was unlimited. 
And the more you learn, because of the way your brain works, the stronger it becomes. So you can learn more, faster. It's like a muscle. If you make your muscle strong, it becomes stronger. So, I practiced it myself and changed my life within one year. So then, I began to tell other people, this is how it works. And they took the ideas, and they changed their lives. And so, I began to teach and tell people these ideas. And then I realized I needed to learn more. So, I spent thousands of hours reading and studying and going to seminars. I took 4,000 hours at the university to get an MBA degree. I took hundreds of hours of audio programs, maybe thousands, to learn new ideas to help people achieve success faster than they ever would, because I had that experience. I wanted everyone else to have that experience. Even when I'm talking to you now, you can see this is my passion. I want to help people to be successful faster. But what you have to ask is, if you had all the money in the world, if you were rich, but you had to do something, you still had to work, you could not go on vacation, what would you choose to do? What would you like to do if you had all the money? And you ask that question, you think, well, if I had all the money, then I would like to do this. You know, I spoke to one man who became wealthy, and he wanted to build schools in India for poor people. That's what he wanted to do. He's built now 42 schools. I know two close friends of mine who were very successful, and they wanted to build hospitals in Uganda. They saw something on television, and they visited Uganda, and they realized there was a big need. So now, they come back here, and they work, and they raise money, and they go back every year, and they build a new hospital in Uganda. So that's something that pulls you. You want to do it. And so, ask yourself, if I had all the money, what would I want to do? And then, another thing you can ask is, what if you only had five years left to live, or ten years? You say, if I only had a short time left to live, what would I want to leave behind? What would I want people to say about me? Here's a very important story. They studied the 500 owners of the fastest growing businesses in the world, and they asked them, why did you choose this business? And all of them said, I chose this business because I really love the product. I wanted the product for myself, and so I developed it for myself. Like the founder of eBay was looking for a way to sell his candy dispensers. He had a collection, and there wasn't anything, so he created a little auction site on the internet at the beginning. And then he found he could sell other things in an auction. They built eBay, one of the most successful companies in the world. But he started it because he wanted it for himself. So, you'll always be successful if you create the product or service because it's something that you want and believe in for yourself. There's a great story. The one company that grew the fastest in this study of fast-growing companies grew 42,000 in one year, in three years. 42,000 percent. That's 4,200 times in three years. Well, what was the product? The product was an iPad that was specially programmed for children to do their homework. And they put the children's programs from television onto the iPad, and they put the homework from the school on the iPad. So if the child did the homework, they could watch a TV program. When they did more homework, they could watch more TV program. So, children became motivated to do their homework, and all their children, this little family, two or three families, got straight A's in school. Grades went straight up. They always did their homework, and always, so the other parents said, Why do your children get such good grades? They said, Because of this little program we developed for our iPad. And they said, Can we have that? They said, Yes. And they began to tell other people. They grew 4200%. Everybody wanted this iPad program to help their children get good grades at school. You think they solved a problem, they achieved a goal, they fulfilled a need. I read two to three hours each day. I read all the time. Whenever I have more time to read, like for example next week, I will fly to Georgia in southern Russia. All right, the flight will be 15 hours. I will have to sleep of course, but I will probably read eight hours on that flight. I will take books, and I have books on my iPad, and I have magazines, business magazines, and I will read and take out pages and read, so I will get eight or nine or ten hours. And then flying back, I will get another eight or nine or ten hours of reading. But each day, I read at least two hours. Each day, just in the city, a little in the morning, a little in the day, a little in the evening, continually reading. It's very much like eating. You cannot eat, and people think, well, I will wait until the weekend, and then I will read all my books and magazines. No, you have to read a little at a time. And the key to learning, by the way, is very interesting. 
In music, all the music that you hear is the pauses between the sounds. It's not the notes. It's the pause. So, in learning, it's the pause between taking in the information. If I say to you, the very best way to invest in your business is to improve the quality of your business. Pause. You have to think about that. That is a good idea. That's a very good idea. The second place that you can invest is to improve your marketing quality, and then marketing. And so, in other words, you have to take time to think about what you're learning while you are learning it. Other than that, it's like having a hose with water in your mouth just non-stop. You cannot learn anything unless you slow down, pause, think, digest it. Yes, just like eating a nice dinner, you have to chew and digest and take time. Well, number one is my family. I have four children, and two of them are married. And the others will be married, and they have grandchildren. Five grandchildren. Of course my wife. But my family has always been healthy and happy and has had a good life. So, that to me is more important than everything else. I would say number two, which is way down below, I would like to say that I helped a lot of people to be more successful faster. But probably the third thing is that I would want people to say that Brian Tracy was a good man. That's all. A loyal friend. A person who always tells the truth. Who's a loyal friend. Who's helpful. Who always supports their friends. You can always count or depend upon him for anything. I have like you're here doing an interview. You know that I am very busy. Came out of my studio this morning. I'm going into another meeting very soon. But I have a rule that if with my friends, you're my friend. Whatever you ask, the answer is yes. We respond. It's always yes. Well, if you can imagine the pistons in an engine, all right, they're always going up and down. So, let's say you have an automobile engine with eight pistons. Well, it's the same as your priorities. They're constantly different. They change. One goes up, one goes down. And this happens all the time with your life, with my life. There is no simple explanation. It's always changing, and sometimes every hour. So you have to just keep setting priorities. What is most important? Now for example, when my children would come to speak to me when I was working, I would always stop everything. My wife wants to speak to me. I stop all work because they're more important. And now, my grandchildren come to see me when I'm working. I stop everything to pay attention to my grandchildren. My top priority is always the people in my life. So, whatever is happening, People always go number one. So, my grandchild, daughter, is three. Usually, my grandchildren have very short attention, so it doesn't take very long, only a few minutes, two or three minutes, maybe five minutes, and then they want to go and do something else. Well, again, I am working a lot in the subject of business model reinvention, business model innovation. A business model has about ten different parts, and they're very much like the pistons in an engine. And the most important part of a successful business is happy customers. And so therefore, everything must be secondary to happy customers. So, the primary job of a business is to create new customers, to find new customers, to make more sales. The second job is to make those customers happy. Whatever else is always secondary. So, if you have a customer, the customer is now top priority. Making the customer happy so that the customer returns and buys from you again. That's the most important thing of all. That's the heartbeat. Paperwork, computers, emails are all secondary. The customer comes first. Now how do we know that this is true? It's because all successful companies put the customer first. And unsuccessful companies think the customers are too much trouble, or the customer is always asking for too much. And so, they think that their work in their company is important. But the rule is, that there are no results inside the business. There are no results inside the business. All the results are outside the business, with the customers. So, the reason that you plan and strategize and organize, is so that you can focus on the most important things you can do, to make your customers, happy. Everything else is secondary. Some human beings get along well together, and some do not. And this is just a fact of life, just like when a man meets a woman. Sometimes there is a connection, sometimes no connection. It's the same with customers. Sometimes the customer likes you, sometimes the customer is neutral. You cannot change that. So, the key is to create as many opportunities to meet as many new customers as possible. It's like finding someone to marry. You have to talk to a lot of people. The best thing, and I teach an entire seminar program on hiring the best people, but a simple way is to make a list of everything that you would like in the perfect person. 
day, and then when you meet people, compare against your ideas. Writing these ideas down will improve your ability to hire good people by two or three or five times better. You make much better choices. You recognize good people in an interview. Just write everything down so you are clear in your mind what you are looking for. First of all, I have a lot of experience with personal assistants, and I was very clear about what I wanted a personal assistant to be able to do, and what previous experience she had. So, when we found this personal assistant, he was perfect. She fit the list based on experience and knowledge. Probably, I don't do that myself. Other people will do that work, and then I will make the final decision. Well, the reason that I became an international speaker was because I had produced several video training programs that I distributed overseas in foreign languages. And as a result, the companies who attended the video training said, we would like to bring him to Germany, and then to Poland, and then to Italy. The second way is that I wrote books. The major reason why I am so popular overseas is because of my books. And I write four books each year. One book I cannot answer because I have 70 books, and you have to ask what subject would be most important for your development. Then you would read my book, The Way to Wealth, which is one of the best books ever done on business success. And it takes you through each step practically of what you need to do to build any business. If you wanted to learn to sell, then you would read one of my books on the psychology of selling or the art of closing the sale. If you want to manage your time better, you'd read one of my time management books. So the question is, when you say, what restaurant should you go to? It depends upon your appetite. Well, tonight I feel like this kind of food. Well, it depends upon the subject that can help you the most at this time. The word entrepreneur more or less means future. Entrepreneurship is dependent on entrepreneurs, and these are people who take risks to create new products, services and businesses, and they determine the whole future of France. And fortunately, entrepreneurship is learnable. You can learn to become an excellent business person, and then you can accomplish any financial goal you can set for yourself. I would say that Jim Rohn is the most helpful professional speaker and seminar leader in the world today. What people say about me is they say that you learn more practical ideas in a seminar with me than with any other speaker in the world. And that has been my goal for many years. And now millions of people say those words. That if you want to learn a lot of good ideas, Brian has more ideas on any subject than anybody else.